Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has one of the biggest DLCs of any game I've ever seen. I mean, they literally doubled the size of the game with this DLC. Like, that's just crazy. But not all of these tracks in this DLC were made equally. There's some pretty amazing ones, and then there's some that are just, you know, not that great. A couple of months ago, I made a tier list for every track in the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe base game, and since then, I've really wanted to talk about the DLC because, you know, the DLC is pretty great. So, yeah, in this video, I'll be ranking each track in the Booster Course Pass. This will be an ordered tier list, so if you don't know what that means, it basically means like if something's at the top of a tier, it's better than something that's at the bottom of a tier. Also, remember this is my opinion, so if you don't like a track's placement, don't worry about it. You'll be good, but if you want to let me know where you would place these tracks, just let me know in the comments, because I'd like to read those. And while you're down there in the comments, I mean, if you really want to like the video, I mean, go crazy. Why not, you know? In the last video, I started at the bottom in F tier and just worked my way up the tier list, but this time, I want to do something different, so I'll just go cup by cup. So, yeah, let's just, uh, let's get it started. The first track for this video is Paris Promenade. Uh, I don't really love the tour tracks because they all kind of feel the same, you know? But this one isn't super offensively bad or anything. I like the whole vibe of this track, so yeah, I'll just give it a C tier. The next track here is Toad Circuit, and this is one of the most basic boring tracks that Mario Kart has to offer. I like that this track is bright and sunshiny and all, but this track is so boring. Like this is a track that you have to pay extra for. It's not just part of the base game. So yeah, uh, D tier. Choco Mountain's up next, and this track is a classic that's been in a few Mario Kart games. And uh, yeah, this track's been retroed so much for a reason. It's a great track. I like the new addition of the glider section, and the rocks falling in this one actually can hit you. So yeah, I'm feeling a solid B tier. Coconut Mall is one of the most popular tracks in Mario Kart history, and trust me, it's for a good reason. The music here is great, and the whole layout of the track is just awesome. I know this is going to sound really nitpicky, but this version took out the normal escalators and added these, like, conveyor belt things or something. I don't know why, but it takes out, like, the mall feeling for me. I don't know why it pisses me off so much, but it does. So, yeah, uh, this one's going A tier instead of S tier just because of that. At the start of Lucky Cat Cup, we have our second tour track of the video. This track might be the most boring track in the game. I absolutely just hate this track. Tokyo is such a cool place, and this track makes it look so boring. Like, I don't know how you do that. Also, these arrows that, like, point you in the right direction on the tour tracks are so ugly. I hate those, too. I don't really have anything good to say about this track. Uh, F tier. So... Uh, okay, uh, anyway, the next track is Shroom Ridge, and this is one of the many tracks that just has you drive on like a normal, like, real life road. I mean, it literally comes with real life cars and everything, it's crazy. This one has a lot of twists and turns though, so I like the challenge that this one poses, but it's pretty basic, so C tier. Sky Garden is up next, and I don't know what it is about this one, but I get so bored by it. It just feels like there's nothing going on, and for that, it's just gonna go in D tier. Ninja Hideaway showed me that even though they came out with a lot of these kind of trash tour tracks, uh, they still have a lot of great tracks in the tank. Like, this one's pretty awesome. Like, look at all of the little details going on and how fast everything is moving past you. It's so fun. This track's pretty difficult, if I'm being honest, but I really like the challenge, and I'm gonna put it up in A tier. Amsterdam Drift is a tour track that's a lot like Paris Promenade to me. It's bright, it has a decent vibe, it has a little bit going on, nothing too crazy. Some parts of this track are even better than the Paris one, but there's other parts that I think are pretty boring, so I'll just put it right under Paris on the tier list. Riverside Park is alright. There isn't a lot going on in this one, it has some nice turns, it has some nice lighting, but it's just nothing jumps out at me, you know? There is the pretty cool waterfall jump, and I do like the little piranha guys walking around. So yeah, there's nothing too great, nothing too offensive, so see Tier. DK Summit is an absolute S tier. This track is so much fun. The cannon at the start, the huge shortcut in the middle, the half pipe scattered everywhere. This track has everything you need and it earns the top spot on my list so far. And just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we have Yoshi's Island. This track has the best song in the entire game. It, I love this song, the remix of it is amazing. The detail that's put into this track just is insane. Like, look at these coins and these chain shops and uh, just everything. Just look at everything. Like, wow, how? 
this might sound a little crazy coming from the guy that's playing as Yoshi on the Yoshi bike and the Yoshi track is his favorite one so far. I'm not a huge Yoshi guy. I know it sounds like I'm lying, but I've never even played any of the Yoshi games. I just play as him in Mario Kart for some reason. So yeah, if you didn't get it from what I said, this is going to the top of S tier. The next tour track we have is Bangkok Rush. This track is so boring and has way too many arrows all over the place. I also just don't really love how this track looks all the time, so yeah, I just don't think this track's very great. If it wasn't for this section with all these tents that you're jumping off of, I would probably go F tier, but it saved it and put it in D tier. The DS Mario Circuit is one of the better Mario Circuits that they've made, and it's kind of cool that it's in this game. I mean, it is still a Mario Circuit though, so it's pretty basic, so uh, yeah, we're just gonna put it right in C tier. Waluigi Stadium is a really exciting track. It's it's one of my favorites on the Wii and they added this super cool upper ramp which is a nice addition. I have no idea why though they decided to change where these piranha plant chomper things face though. Like they're just not in the way anymore as much. Changing that makes this whole section right here a little bit more boring because you have just less to avoid. But with that said this is still an amazing track and belongs in A tier. Singapore Speedway is the best tour track we've looked at so far. It's so bright and colorful. It is a tour track though, and we're gonna have to put that tax on it, so it's just gonna go to the top of C tier. New York Minute is up next, and this track could have been so cool, but it sucks. It's just as boring as Tokyo Blur, but this time it's at night and there's less to do. Like, I know the tour tracks were made for the phone game, but this track actually feels like it was made to stay on that game and should have never been ported over to the console. So yeah, you guys know where this is going. A tier! Just kidding. Mario Circuit 3 is an alright track. I really do like it, but I just can't justify putting it above D tier because of how many good tracks are in this DLC. It's just too basic to go anywhere higher. Calamari Desert is one of the first tracks I think about when I think about Mario Kart. This track is pretty fun, and I really like the part where you drive through the tunnel like on the train tracks, so B tier. Waluigi Pinball is such an amazing track. It's so colorful and detailed and creative. It's such an amazing idea to have a Mario Kart track that's inside of a pinball machine, so yeah, this is a pretty easy S tier. Sydney Sprint is a pretty cool track. It has three glider sections, some pretty interesting locations, and some pretty challenging spots, so B tier. Snowland is one of the few ice tracks in the game, and the slipperiness adds a nice challenging aspect to the track. It also has a few pretty cool shortcuts, so how about a nice B tier? Mushroom Gorge is another B tier in a row. It's one of the most recognizable tracks in the Wii, but the mushrooms in this game bounce a little bit differently than they did before. Now you kind of have less control over it, and I don't really like it, so it bumps it down a little bit. Sky High Sunday is a way less cool version of Sweet Sweet Canyon from the base game. First of all, this track just feels extremely barren. Like there's just nothing around except for the track and the clouds in the background. This track is also super easy and not really that fun to race on, so uh, pretty easy F tier for me. I get the same exact vibe from Athens Dash as I get from Paris Promenade. Like I can't understand why, but I, it just is the same vibe in my head. So uh, yeah, you can guess where that's going on the tier list. Daisy Cruiser is pretty simple, but it's really fun. The updated version adds a lot with the aquarium part and the little pool at the top that you can drive through. I think they're pretty great additions. So with all that said, I'm thinking a nice high B tier for this track. Moonview Highway is next and this is basically just a night version of Shroom Ridge, so I'll put it a little higher on the tier list because I like the night vibe of this track. Squeaky Clean Sprint is another amazing idea that Nintendo came up with. Driving through a bathroom that's definitely owned by a maniac because of how much is going on is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool idea. This might be the most detailed track they've ever made, and it's pretty fun to drive on. So I'm going to put it in A tier just because I like a few of the other tracks in the game a little bit more, but this is an amazing track. Los Angeles Laps is one of the worst tour tracks. It's not on the level of New York or Tokyo because, you know, you can fly through Dodger Stadium at least, but this track is really ugly, so I'm gonna put it in low D tier. Sunset Wilds is an absolutely beautiful track, especially right after we just looked at Los Angeles Laps. I heard somewhere that the sun actually sets in the original, and that's pretty cool, but it being perpetually golden hour is just fine by me. Based on that, I mean, I'm just gonna put it in B tier. It's a basic track, but it's great to look at. The original Koopa Cape is one of the best Wii tracks, and it's mainly because of the pipe section that's at the end of the track. For some reason though, they decided to take the coolest part of this track and make it so boring. I mean, this track is still great and a B tier, but it seriously could have been maybe an S tier if they just kept it how it was. Vancouver Velocity is just alright. I don't know why, but I genuinely just cannot enjoy this track. I just can't get into it. I think it's a little bit better than Bangkok Rush, so I'll just put it at the top of D tier. 
London Loop is next, and it's just like Bangkok Rush. So yeah, it's going right next to it on the tier list. Like, I like this part with the chain chomps, but these tracks just kind of blend together in my head. Blue Lake is just kind of alright. It has some sharp turns and some challenging sections, but it's just so short and it's just kind of boring. So C tier it goes. Rock Rock Mountain is pretty solid all the way through. Like a, uh, a rock, you could say. Solid like a rock. You know? Sorry. Um, uh, anyway, uh, there's two big highlights in this track. One is a huge jump right after the cave section, and the other one is the big steep climb back up to the top of the mountain. I think these two little sections here are enough to get this track up into B tier. The next track is another Wii throwback, Maple Treeway. In my opinion, this is the best looking track in the game other than maybe Yoshi's Island. I absolutely love this track. The theme is just incredible with the whole driving through these autumn trees, and the actual structure of the track is amazing. I just love this track. This track is comfortably going up right near the top of S tier. Like, this track is great. The next track we have, well, it's it's not going to the top of S tier. It's another tour track that just blends in with the London one, so yeah, we're just gonna put it right next to it on the tier list. Peach Gardens is such a simple track, but they execute it so well. This is exactly what I imagine when I think of, like, a royal garden. And while it still has a couple of those kind of ugly arrows, I'm still gonna put it in the middle of A tier. Mary Mountain is probably the most summery track this game has to offer. Like, imagine just a nice glass of lemonade on this track, right? Uh, yeah, I'm kidding, obviously. This is the christmas theme track for this game, and it's still pretty cool. I like the different paths you can take near the start, even though I die in the footage here. Um, it's got that, and has a pretty cool steep hill you can drive down at the end, so I'm feeling a nice solid B tier here. The last track of Mario Kart 7 is the next track we have here. The 3DS Rainbow Road is one of the best Rainbow Roads that Nintendo has ever made. This one is great. I really like the tracks that are just one big track split into three parts. I think it's pretty creative and it's really fun to drive on. Every part of this track is exciting and new and it can't go any lower than S tier, honestly. The Acorn Cups Tour Track is different from the rest. The lighting on this track is actually just perfect, and each section of this track feels super unique. Rome looks absolutely beautiful here, and I'm not like a huge Rome guy or anything, like it's just awesome. Surprisingly, I'm gonna put Rome Avanti in A tier, because it's just really great all the way around. DK Mountain is up next, and I think at this point, if it's a DK track, you just know it's gonna be a great one. This track has super cool things, like the cannon it has that is just like Maple Treeway and uh, DK Summit. Also, I've uh, mentioned the mountain guy. There's a really cool shortcut on this track that I failed at when I tried to record this, so that's cool. This track's going in S tier, but near the bottom. It honestly could have been higher, but in this one they made the roads way wider, which I think is kind of lame. Daisy Circuit is another simple Wii track, but it just looks incredible. And while the structure of this track is pretty simple, I still really enjoy racing on it, so A tier. Piranha Plant Cove is, well, it's okay. Of all the tracks with all the arrows in different directions you go, this is the one I get confused on the most. Like, I get lost every time I race on this one. This track also isn't very incredible to look at or anything, so I'm just feeling the top of D tier here. Finally, we're on our last cup of the game. To start off this cup, we have Madrid Drive, and this one reminds me of London Loop again, so you know where it's going. Rosalina's Ice World was so cool to me the first time I played it, but it really just hasn't aged well for me. I like the half pipe part at the start, but then after that, it's just okay. Everything after the melting ice part is completely forgettable, but everything before it is pretty great, so I think that averages out to a C tier. I don't know how they turned SNES Bowser's Castle 3 into such an amazing track when the source material is literally from the SNES. This track is crazy with the lava pillars, the anti-gravity, the branching paths, like, it's so cool. With all that said, I think it's earned its spot up near the top of A tier. And finally, we have ourselves Wii Rainbow Road, the last track of the game. This was a perfect way to end the DLC. The Wii version of this track is, in my opinion, the best Rainbow Road they've ever made. In this iteration of the track, they made it feel a little bit more flat, which I don't like as much, but it's still an amazing track. I have no problem putting this track up in S tier as the third best track in the DLC. And uh, there we go, that was me ranking the entire DLC of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Here's the tier list as a whole, and let me just say it was really fun to make it, like I had a great time. I should also probably include a combined tier list, so if you haven't seen the first part where I ranked the base game, you should check that out first and then come back to this part. So, uh, you guys, you guys gone? Okay, so here's my full list. So yeah, Yoshi's Island is my favorite track to come out of this entire game, DLC and base game included. I'll have to look at other Mario Karts to see if this is my favorite track of all time, but it's up there. If you guys want to give me some of your rankings in the comments, I'd love to read them. Uh, and if you like the video, or if you're not subscribed and you like the video, 
uh, do those things, you know. But yeah, that's uh, that's kind of everything I got for you guys today. So, okay, bye.